medieval gardens achieved yields that seem impossible by today's standards, without machines, synthetic fertilizers, or pesticides. These small plots consistently produced enough to sustain households and supply markets. What precise methods allowed such efficiency? And how did they manage to keep production high season after season in conditions that should have limited their growth? One key answer lay right in the ground itself. Raised beds, the foundation of every successful medieval garden, reshaped how plants grew and thrived. The science behind raised beds was simple but brilliant. Soil in elevated beds warmed up much faster in spring than flat ground. Dark earth absorbed sunlight better when lifted above the surrounding area. This meant medieval gardeners could start planting weeks earlier than their neighbors with flat gardens. Getting a head start on spring was like having VIP access to the growing season. Drainage made the difference between thriving plants and dead ones. Raised beds naturally shed excess water that would otherwise drown plant roots. Heavy rains flowed away instead of creating swampy conditions. Root systems stayed healthy because they could breathe properly in well-drained soil. Medieval gardeners built their raised beds with whatever materials they could find. Stone walls held soil in place and added thermal mass. Wood planks created neat borders that kept growing areas organized. Even simple mounded earth worked when properly shaped and maintained. Walled gardens created completely different growing environments from the surrounding countryside. These enclosed spaces trapped warm air and blocked cold winds that could damage tender plants. Stone walls absorbed heat during sunny days and released it slowly at night. The result was a microclimate several degrees warmer than areas outside the walls. Medieval walls were basically the world's first garden security system, except they never needed batteries. They kept out hungry animals that would otherwise eat entire crops overnight while creating perfect growing conditions inside. Path systems prevented soil compaction that killed plant productivity. Medieval gardeners never walked directly on growing areas. Instead, they created permanent walkways between beds that allowed easy access for maintenance work. These paths meant soil stayed loose and fluffy, exactly what plant roots needed to spread and grow strong. The layout followed strict organization principles that maximized growing efficiency. Different types of plants got their own dedicated areas based on their specific needs. Companion planting zones were mapped out carefully to take advantage of beneficial plant relationships. Medieval gardeners knew exactly which plants helped each other grow better. The entire system worked because medieval gardeners planned everything in advance. They solved problems before problems appeared. Every element of the garden layout served multiple purposes and supported the overall goal of maximum food production. This systematic approach to layout was just the beginning. Medieval gardeners discovered that certain plants could actually help each other grow stronger. Companion planting turned medieval gardens into strategic battlefields where plants fought pests and diseases together. Smart gardeners knew exactly which plants made the best allies. Onions became the secret weapons of carrot protection. Carrot flies found their target plants by following scent trails through the air. Onions released strong sulfur compounds that completely masked carrot smells. The flies got confused and flew away to look for easier targets. Onions basically gave carrot flies the plant version of a cold, making them unable to smell their favorite food. Bean partnerships solved soil fertility issues while feeding hungry plants. Beans worked with special bacteria living in their roots to capture nitrogen from the air and store it in the soil. Heavy feeding plants like cabbages could use this nitrogen to fuel their rapid growth. The beans kept refueling what the cabbages consumed. Marigolds served as the bouncers of medieval vegetable gardens. These bright flowers produced chemicals that many destructive insects absolutely hated. Plant marigolds around valuable crops and pest populations dropped dramatically. Marigolds were like having security guards who looked beautiful while keeping the troublemakers away. Trap crops took pest control to another level entirely. Medieval gardeners deliberately planted specific crops that pests preferred over their main vegetables. These sacrifice plants attracted all the troublemakers to one area where they could be easily destroyed. Radishes drew flea beetles away from valuable cabbages. Nasturtiums collected aphids like magnets. Pollinator gardens ensured good fruit and seed production throughout the growing area. Certain herbs produced flowers that bees and butterflies couldn't resist. These beneficial insects flocked to the herb gardens and spread throughout the entire property, improving pollination of all flowering plants. Root depth partnerships prevented competition between neighboring plants. 
deep-rooted plants paired with shallow-rooted ones so each could access different soil layers, like having upstairs and downstairs neighbors who never fought over the same resources. Chemical communication between plants created early warning systems that helped gardens defend themselves. When certain plants came under attack, they released warning chemicals that nearby plants could detect. The neighbors would boost their own natural defenses before trouble arrived. These brilliant partnerships worked perfectly, but only when plants had exactly the right foundation underneath them. Animal manure formed the backbone of medieval soil management because it provided exactly what hungry plants needed most. Every scrap of animal waste got collected and carefully applied to garden beds. Different types of manure served different purposes in the medieval garden system. Cow manure provided steady, long-lasting nutrition that slowly released nutrients over entire growing seasons. Horse manure heated up as it decomposed, helping warm cold spring soil for earlier planting. Chicken droppings delivered concentrated nitrogen that leafy vegetables craved for rapid growth. Medieval gardeners turned barnyard waste into plant treasure proving that one animal's bathroom break was another plant's five-star meal. The key was knowing how to process and apply different manures for maximum benefit without burning delicate plant roots. Green manure crops provided another brilliant soil enrichment strategy. Medieval gardeners planted specific crops just to chop them down and dig them back into the earth. These sacrifice plants grew quickly, then got tilled under while still green and full of nutrients. Clover, rye, and other cover crops captured nutrients from deep in the soil and concentrated them in their leaves and stems. Kitchen waste composting turned household scraps into garden gold. Vegetable peels, eggshells, fruit cores, and food leftovers all went into carefully managed decomposition systems. The composting process needed the right mixture of nitrogen-rich green materials and carbon-rich brown materials for perfect results. Crop rotation prevented soil exhaustion better than any other medieval farming technique. Gardens got divided into sections and different plant families moved through each area on strict schedules. Beans enriched the soil one year. Grains used up nitrogen the next. Root vegetables broke up compacted earth in the third year. Medieval gardens basically played musical chairs with plants, except the soil always got a comfortable seat. This rotation system meant soil never got completely depleted because different plants took different nutrients and gave back different benefits. Leaf litter collection provided another crucial soil amendment that cost nothing but labor. Medieval gardeners gathered fallen leaves from nearby forests and spread them thick around garden plants. The leaves slowly broke down, adding organic matter that improved soil structure dramatically. Earthworm populations exploded in gardens with plenty of organic matter. These beneficial creatures work constantly to break down dead plant material and create nutrient-rich castings. Medieval gardeners could judge soil health by counting earthworms in each garden bed. Perfect soil created amazing growing conditions, but medieval gardeners wanted more than just summer vegetables. Cold frames extended medieval growing seasons by protecting plants from frost and harsh weather. These simple structures trapped warm air around tender vegetables and allowed fresh food production even during winter months. The basic cold frame design used a wooden box with a slanted glass or transparent cover that could be opened and closed based on weather conditions. Medieval gardeners built these protective structures against south-facing walls to capture maximum sunlight throughout short winter days. Temperature control inside cold frames required daily attention and careful management. Sunny winter days could overheat plants if covers stayed closed too long. Cold nights demanded sealed covers to trap every bit of warmth possible. Medieval gardeners basically became plant weathermen, predicting what their vegetables needed before the plants even knew they needed it. Cloches provided individual plant protection on a smaller scale than cold frames. These portable covers could protect single plants or small groups from unexpected frosts. Medieval gardeners made cloches from glass vessels pottery pieces, or specially woven baskets coated with protective materials. Succession planting maximized harvest potential by providing continuous crops throughout growing seasons. Instead of planting entire gardens at once, medieval gardeners sowed new seeds every few weeks. This technique meant fresh vegetables appeared constantly rather than overwhelming harvests, followed by empty periods. Perennial vegetables provided food security without yearly replanting effort. Asparagus spears emerged every spring for decades once established. 
perennial onions regrew after cutting. These reliable crops formed the foundation of sustainable food systems that continued producing year after year. Microclimate management allowed medieval gardeners to grow plants that shouldn't have survived their climate zones. South-facing corners protected by walls from cold northern winds could support tender herbs and vegetables normally found in much warmer regions. Heat retention techniques used thermal mass to store warmth during sunny days and release it during cold nights. Dark stones, water containers, and even compost piles strategically placed around tender plants provided extra warmth during critical periods. Indoor growing supplemented outdoor production during the coldest months. Herbs grew on sunny windowsills throughout winter. Sprouted seeds provided fresh nutrition when outdoor gardens lay dormant. Some vegetables could be forced indoors and containers for fresh winter harvests. Growing food year-round was impressive, but it created a completely new challenge that most people never think about. Rainwater harvesting captured every drop of free irrigation water before it disappeared into the ground. Medieval gardeners built systems of gutters, channels, and storage containers to collect rainfall from roofs, walls, and paved surfaces. Stone cisterns held thousands of gallons for use during dry periods that could last weeks or months. These underground or partially buried storage systems kept water cool and prevented evaporation losses. Barrel collection systems offered portable water storage that could be positioned wherever needed most. Medieval gardeners basically created the world's first distributed water network, except instead of pipes, they used gravity and wooden containers. Channel systems directed natural water sources like streams and springs directly to garden beds through carefully dug trenches. Gravity moved water from higher ground down to planted areas without requiring pumps or other mechanical devices. Simple wooden gates and stone barriers controlled water flow to different garden sections. Mulching techniques dramatically reduced water loss through evaporation by covering bare soil surfaces with organic materials. Straw mulch around vegetables kept soil moist for days longer than uncovered ground. Different mulching materials served different purposes in medieval water conservation strategies. Drought-resistant plant selection matched crops to available water supplies in different garden areas. Thirsty vegetables like cabbages and lettuce grew near reliable water sources. Hardy herbs and grain crops went in areas with less irrigation access. Medieval gardeners played plant matchmaker, setting up vegetables with water sources that could keep them happy long term. Watering schedules followed natural patterns that minimized water waste through evaporation. Early morning watering allowed plants to absorb moisture before hot sun increased evaporation rates. Evening watering replenished plants after daytime stress without losing water immediately to heat. Deep watering techniques encouraged strong root development that made plants more drought resistant over time. Medieval gardeners used containers with small holes to deliver water slowly and deeply rather than wetting just the soil surface. Shade management protected both plants and soil from excessive water loss during hot summer weather. Tall plants provided natural shade for shorter crops during the hottest parts of the day. Temporary shade structures made from cloth or branches protected sensitive plants from wilting heat. Smart water systems made everything possible, but they couldn't run themselves. Medieval gardens needed something else entirely. Task organization kept medieval gardens running smoothly through carefully planned work schedules that matched human and animal labor to seasonal garden needs. Everyone from children to adults had specific responsibilities that contributed to overall productivity. Monks brought systematic approaches to garden management that few other groups could match. Their daily schedules included garden duties alongside other responsibilities. The monastic commitment to routine created consistency in garden care that plants desperately needed. Monks treated garden work like prayer. It happened every day whether they felt like it or not. Family labor systems assigned different tasks based on age and physical ability. Adults handled heavy work like digging beds and hauling materials. Teenagers managed moderately difficult tasks like tool maintenance and harvest processing. Children contributed valuable labor for detailed tasks that required patience rather than physical strength. Specialization allowed workers to develop expertise in specific garden areas. Some people focused on seed starting and plant propagation. Others became experts in pest management or soil preparation. This division of labor created efficiency that small-scale operations couldn't achieve otherwise. Goats provided mobile vegetation management services while fertilizing soil naturally. 
These animals could be moved to wherever grass and weed control was needed most. Their grazing kept unused areas clear for future cultivation, while their manure enriched the soil for better plant growth. Chickens served multiple purposes in medieval garden ecosystems. They ate insects, grubs, and other pests that would otherwise damage crops. They scratched through compost piles, speeding decomposition while hunting for bugs. Chickens were basically feathered employees who worked for seeds and scraps while providing pest control, fertilizer, and breakfast ingredients. Training systems ensured garden knowledge passed from experienced workers to beginners. Master gardeners taught specific techniques for plant care, pest management, and soil preparation. This knowledge transfer meant skills accumulated over generations rather than starting over with each new worker. Seasonal labor adjustments matched workforce size to garden demands throughout the year. Spring planting required many workers to get crops established quickly. Summer maintenance could be handled by smaller crews. Harvest time demanded intensive labor to gather crops before spoilage occurred. Animal integration extended beyond just providing fertilizer and pest control services. Horses and oxen supplied power for heavy digging and soil preparation that would exhaust human workers. Working animals made possible the intensive land preparation that supported high-yield growing methods. With all these systems working together, medieval gardeners achieved something that still amazes experts today. Mixed plantings created insurance policies against total crop failure by spreading risk across many different types of plants. When one crop failed due to pests, disease, or weather problems, others survived to feed the family through difficult periods. The diversity strategy worked because different plants faced different threats and had different growing requirements. Pest outbreaks that devastated one type of vegetable often left other crops completely untouched. Weather that damaged grain crops might actually benefit root vegetables or leafy greens. Intensive spacing methods squeeze maximum production from limited garden areas by planting vegetables closer together than modern recommendations suggest. Medieval gardeners understood that plants grown in rich soil with adequate water could support higher density plantings without reducing individual plant health. Medieval gardens were basically vegetable apartment buildings, lots of residents living close together, but everyone had what they needed to thrive. Vertical growing techniques multiplied production capacity without requiring additional ground space. Beans climbed poles and trellises, squash vines spread across the ground between taller plants. Fruit trees created overhead growing layers that didn't compete with ground level crops. Succession planting maintained steady harvest throughout growing seasons instead of overwhelming abundance followed by empty periods. New seeds got planted every few weeks to ensure continuous production of fresh vegetables rather than having everything ripen at once. Multi-purpose plants provided food, medicine, and other necessities from single growing areas. Many herbs served as both cooking seasonings and medical treatments. Some vegetables provided edible leaves, roots, and seeds from the same plant. Medieval plants were like Swiss army knives, one tool with multiple useful functions. Surplus production created opportunities for trade and income generation beyond just feeding the family. Productive gardens often yielded more than households could consume. Extra vegetables, herbs, and fruits could be sold at local markets or traded for other necessities. Seed saving from the best plants ensured continued productivity while maintaining genetic diversity. Medieval gardeners selected seeds from their healthiest, most productive plants to grow next year's crops. This practice gradually improved crop performance while preserving valuable genetic traits. Harvest timing optimization ensured maximum nutrition and storage life from garden produce. Different vegetables needed to be harvested at specific stages of maturity for best flavor, nutritional value, and preservation potential. Storage techniques extended garden productivity far beyond growing seasons through careful preservation of surplus crops. Medieval gardens proved that small spaces could feed families, heal sicknesses, and generate income all from the same plots of land, basically the original sustainable living success story. These productive systems developed over centuries of practical experimentation and represented humanity's accumulated wisdom about growing food efficiently and sustainably.